Hello everyone, this video is going to go over one way to calculate the ignition temperature of, of a, a material using the critical heat flux parameter. Now you can find these parameters in the SFP handbook table 3-4.2 in section 3 chapter 4. And these, these parameters are are derived from or calculated from experiments done in either the cone calorimeter or the fire propagation apparatus, the FPA. So let's say we want to look at rigid PVC. All right, it's listed in the table so we can we can use this. So we have uh, rigid PVC. Now if we look up the CFH, the critical heat flux, it's 15 kilowatts per meter squared. And then if we go to equation 15 of section 3 chapter 4 we can see of the of the SP handbook once again we can see that we have q dot double prime is equal to epsilon sigma tv to the fourth minus t infinity to the fourth now we're going to make some assumptions. We're going to assume that the vaporization temperature is equal to the ignition temperature, which is is kind of reasonable because the uh, most things vaporize at a relatively high rate. Solid solids do anyway. They vaporize at a relatively high temperature, and gas phases usually auto ignite at a relatively low temperature. And if we're using some kind of spark ignition, then then we don't actually need to go all the way up to the vapor the auto ignition temperature to get ignition but we're gonna make that assumption so we have we're gonna use this Q and assume that's our critical heat flux we're gonna assume this is our ignition temperature and then we're gonna assume our, our in this case we're gonna say T infinity is equal to this is our ambient temperature or, or our uh, yeah the temperature around the block is, is 300 K 300 Kelvin. Emissivity is going to be 0 0.9 of the surface, emissivity of the surface. And obviously Stephen Boltzmann's constant is going to be equal to, we're going to use 56.7 times 10 to the negative 12th kilowatts per meters squared Kelvin. Notice this this isn't what you'll usually get. You'll usually get something like 5.6 times 10 to the negative 8th. But remember, we're using kilowatts instead of watts. So we want to remember the units that we're working with. So we can plug this into our equation. We get, well, first we want to rearrange the equation. So we want to rearrange this equation to solve for TV, right? So we can say TV is equal to T ignition, which is equal to Q dot double prime divided by sigma epsilon plus T infinity to the fourth to the one one fourth power. Come on, I race. And so then we can plug in our numbers and we get fifteen. Uh, okay. Fifteen over 0 0.9 times 5 point or 56.7 times 10 to the negative 12th plus 3 300 to the fourth to the 1 fourth power and then we can say t ignition we solve this out it will be 741.34 Kelvin. Now, this has a lot of significant digits to it. If I was going to be given this number in any, any useful manner, uh, I would probably say report it as, as about 740 Kelvin, or I might leave the 741, but there was no way I would hold these decimals with the, uh, the uncertainty involved in both your, your your ambient or your surface temperature, or your ambient temperature, uh, you use here the emissivity and in the 
critical heat flux itself because it comes from the cone calorimeter or the FPA. So we don't want to carry too many significant digits when we report our final answer, but we do want to carry all the decimals until we get to the end so that we keep our accuracy. So I hope you found this useful and have a good day.